Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video of ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian Holland, and with me today is Rhett Newmeyer of Demonstrated Concepts LLC. Now Rhett, we did a video about one of your demonstrated concepts a little while ago with cheek pistols, which was a really interesting, uh, relatively novel idea, and I thought it was really cool. Well, you do the same sort of thing with a 12 gauge which to me seems like a recipe for knocking my teeth out. And so I'm really curious to like hear this defended because the gun that you're holding onto there, which you claim to like, which you've certainly spent a lot of time practicing with, that is pretty much the same thing that I'm vaguely famous on the internet for haranguing a Mossberg rep at SHOT Show over like, how could you possibly justify something this dumb? So, my challenge is, okay, I have here a 14-inch barrel registered short barrel shotgun. You have a dumpster. I do. <laughs> In the nicest, nicest way possible. Why? Well, for the environment that shotguns are used in, um, I find that there are some really credible advantages to running stockless and short compressed into the body okay uh, now any shotgun if you're if you're doing the the thing that is recommended by the people who know best you're probably loading that with quality buckshot um, and maybe a slug for certain times we're talking about the majority of the time we're talking about buckshot that is a 25 yard and in gun with the best buckshot out there yeah we're um, talking about basically a home defense or if it's even an offensive uh situation you're talking about someone like law enforcement kicking in a door and clearing a building which is kind of home offense i suppose sure sure we're so, definitely talking about short range engagements right uh and everyone goes there they go okay yeah home defense uh we don't need the range all right so we don't need the range we've admitted to ourselves we're using a platform that does not have great range capability um but we're using that platform for inside of cramped spaces Okay. People think about this in terms of, I only need to reach out this distance. When I think about cramped spaces, I think about, oh man, there's so many doorways, there's so many little areas to catch my gear up on, to hang my gun up on, and to be impeded by when I am forced to move through those spaces. Uh, I've got, just for that, we have a 14-inch barreled, short-barreled shotgun. And I'm pretty sure that's got a 14-inch barrel on it as well. Yep. So... As I see it, yeah, if this is too long, well, I can pull it down like this. I can pull it in over the shoulder. But if you're going to shoot that, you're putting, you're essentially putting the gun out at the same distance like this. So what do you actually gain by not having a stock since you're holding it out there to shoot? If I'm floating the gun away from my face, like you're saying, I'm gaining nothing. That is not ideal. All right, and that's the end of the video. But okay. uh, I'm not doing that. So uh, what I am actually doing is cheeking this gun. So I'm getting a very compressed firing stance and firing platform uh, and shooting right there. So if we were gonna compare this to... So yeah, there you are, like four or five, six inches shorter. So yeah. this is a short barrel to short barrel, but that you're, you're paying money to get the shorter barrel, but you're not getting the length advantage that you get by ditching the stock. Uh, that is that is a more compressed shooting position. I'm getting smaller. So we can all admit that getting smaller is good. I get smaller with this gun. I also like the fact that I have less hangups with this style of grip. This bird's head grip does not need a rubberized butt pad on it. It uh, doesn't need the sharp angle that you get, the right angle on, that you get on a stock. Uh, and it doesn't have uh, that length, like if you're going to short stock that gun. It's it a does, little awkward having it back there. Right? It does not give me the hang-ups associated with that, that short stocking. Uh, if I am running, moving through a structure in my preferred ready position, which is this tight, compressed, high port position uh, with a forearm against ribs and muzzle in close, I can drag the butt of this gun 
up my chest, over a chest rig, over plates, whatever gear, it will drift effortlessly right into place and present effortlessly. It's, it's shorter, it's easier, it's smoother to push a gun out there. Um, the critical element that I'm like, step one, two, three, not sure, profit is you can actually shoot it that way without punching your teeth out. I can. And you claim that you can teach us how to do this. I can. Okay. I want to see this. I want to learn how to do this. All right. We'll take some shots. Okay. Come over here. I want you to face forward, okay. not blading at all. Okay. And then I want you to drive your hand while keeping your toes, knees, hips, and shoulders pointed towards the target. That's going to shorten that gun and that shooting platform up a bit. Yep. Yeah. Curl this, keep this pinned. Now try that again. And as you blade, it gets harder to keep that arm in, right? You blade more and you want to chicken wing more. Face that straight in. Good. Now, you don't need to put the, the eye behind the optic for this one, but that is, that is the positioning that you want. Yeah. Yep. Think about curling this in on this arm. Sorry, think about curling that fire control arm in. That'll tuck that elbow for you. Do it. Ready? Up. punched myself in the face. We'll Just I wonder why the gun didn't move that much. <laughs> Controllability between this and this. The difference is when I press all of this meat against my ribs and I compress this joint space as much as possible, it's not my muscles that are doing the work while they're flexing, it is the nice cushy surfaces of these muscles that are absorbing now, right? So I'm, uh, sorry, I am flexing my bicep and my tricep so that they are <coughs> stiff, not so that they are like pulling anything. I'm creating a slightly firmer pillow and I'm locking that pillow against this slab of ribs here, keeping that gun in close, cool? Uh, if, if we want to extend this platform's reach and we want to do slug work with this gun, that'll be vital. Because uh, this added little play out here just turned that one, one and a half inches of travel into two and a half, three inches of travel, which on a lot of these guns is the difference between having that grip drift against your face and having it punch you in the face. Cool? So lock that arm in. Let the strap do the work, right? All these guns are equipped with recoil straps. Uh, so uh, you do not need to death grip with your fire control hand. You just need these four fingers, right? Well, I should say, sorry, three fingers, uh, pinning that in to basically keep your hand against the gun. I don't need to wrap and clench that, that bird's head grip. All right, you guys are all loaded, ready. Go to that compressed high port position, muzzle up. Rotate that over and know that nothing on this grip really matters. You've got the strap there. You need these three fingers to tense that in. Does that help you? Yeah. On that shelf, that's much better. That is much better. Set. Nope, that sucked. I hit myself right in the face with my knuckle. Don't do that. Yeah. Yep, I'm okay with that. Uh, the, the first rep that you did, that gun did not. That was a little better. I'm still hitting myself with my fingers. Good. 
That looked great. That felt really that good. That looked great. It looked yeah. great. Yeah, it looked good, dude. Gun is not moving on your face. The gun is really not moving, right? It's traveling that like inch or so backwards and then you're setting back on. The thing I did differently on that is I just ganked the trigger. Okay. I've previously been trying to like hold everything tense and get a good trigger press. Okay. And on that one, I'm like, wait, a, I don't give a shit. Cool. And it worked a lot better. I can't say that I do a, a slow, whatever the slow creepy press on any gun anymore. It's all smash that shit. Just smash it in a way that works really well. All right, I got one still. Okay, so. yep, finish it up. My left elbow has been hurting. Remember I told you my left elbow's hurting? I think I'm done for today. My elbow's hurting. That Dude. also felt really good. Good. Dude, that gun barely good. moved. All right, Rhett, so, so that I'm setting this up right, I have hand through the strap, and there are two things I want to avoid with the hand. One of them is my thumb over the top, because I'll punch myself right in the lip. And the other is having fingers wrapped all the way around the bottom because I'll punch myself in the chin. Now, this bird's head grip is actually really narrow and it probably ought to be, like ideally, it would be bigger so that my fingers didn't come around quite sure. so far. So I'll address just both of those things very quickly. Yeah. This is for comfort, shooting, learning the technique at a range. If you were to wrap your fingers too far around and have the thumb in the wrong place, doing the grip wrong and you press that shot on a good defense buckshot you're not going to knock your teeth out you're not going to give yourself a concussion it's just going to be less pleasant i know this for a fact because i did it on one round i forgot about my thumb and i punched myself nice and good right in the lip and it sucked but but you're still here and you trained another yeah. full box of ammo after that at least yeah. so yeah it's this is to me this is the 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 positioning that you want to get down to be instinctive yes so yep. i'm trying to do it get all of that right nice and slow until i kind of sinks in yep now you've got two hand stops up here so that this gun can be run right or left handed correct because we had a bunch of people up here correct. what i want to do is run my thumb the web of my thumb into that and i'm pushing forward like for dear life yep because this is what's this is mostly what's keeping the gun stable Yes, so you are driving that uh, that thumb towards the target, and we're also doing our, uh, our rotation, our torquing of the gun to wring that gun out like, like a squeegee, like a towel. Um, so, yeah. a ringing the gun out, you're pushing forward and you are clenching this in. One of the tests that I'll do with every student is come up and I'll wiggle. Now, some people can get this, so I can't even get a hand in, awesome. Others, uh, they've got a little bit of lat structure. They've got some some muscle up here, and you can see I can get my hand in. But I feel that there is tension. There are two engaged muscles that are touching each other here. If that is not there, that is a problem. So this is a problem. The chicken wing is a problem. This is a, a nice fluffy spring that is going to have not enough gumption on it to stop that gun. Uh, this tensioning of the spring right here, that will give us just enough travel to dissipate that recoil slowly. Not so much travel that the gun comes back and knocks us. And it's interesting that you're, there's a lot of muscle, like it's constant muscle engagement having this on target. So you're working while you're holding it on target. This isn't like, it, it's really, it's not much like push-pull where you can be holding the gun gently and then push pull fire shot this is if i want to hold this on target i have to keep this tense i will say in the beginning that that is how you're going to feel okay. uh, you let that tension off and then getting it back on is going to be uh it's going to be difficult having shot this i i can come from this high com you know compressed high port uh and relaxed and jam this gun out and take a shot you know half second 0.7 seconds to to one of these targets um i can hold the gun relaxed out here and having done this enough reps i now know that part of pressing the trigger is increasing tension on the gun so okay. tension Just on the gun increases until the bang happens and then i reset everything i need to do if it's a pump gun tension increases again okay let's give it a try Up. 
Not there bad. There you go. Now, I'm gonna give you one more to feed in there. Go ahead and run that home. Throw that in there. And I want you to uh, basically uh -oh. cycle the shoot action. It fast. Right. Once you come up, break that shot. As soon as you perceive recoil, cycle that action. Okay. Holy cow, that actually worked. <laughs> so this is not gamer buckshot. This is home defense buckshot. This yeah. is uh, this is a very doable load. Uh, and honestly, you, you get some more time on it and you can do the bad idea loads. Uh, if you want to look, I've got videos out of me shooting three inch magnum slugs out of this gun. Um, generally those shotgun stuff guys, like the low recoil loads are overkill. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay, now actually here's the question for you. Let's say there is no NFA. You're a cop or there's just no NFA. Would you still take this or would you take a stocked? I like this gun. I like this form factor. Uh, I have far more concern about getting in a self-defense shooting in an environment where I need to minimize snag risk and get on target in a closet than I do getting the advantages of a stock, which is which aren't there, right? Uh, if I'm going to go bench rest this gun in a blind and kill Bambi at 100 yards with a slug, I can relax behind that gun a little more with a, with a stock on there. But that's not the game that I'm playing with this gun. Uh, for the set of, of constraints, for the mission that I have, I want this short, mobile, slick, maneuverable. And that is what the bird's head grip gives us. Okay. So, ready, up. Come back down, reset. As you watch this, you can see that gun drift back just that, what, inch, inch and a half? and then it resets back on as I'm driving back into the gun. Uh, now, I will say a, a primary component here, another benefit that is huge here, uh, is that if you are going to a short stock position with a stock gun, or you know, arm pit tuck, any of that, the primary sighting system is dead. It's gone. That's right. You're, you're index firing. Any way that I would shoot this gun, I am on a dot. So uh, if it is a cramped doorway I need to get around, I'm right there on the primary system. If it is a wide open space and I need to take that, whatever, 25 yard shot, it is the same. I have a little more symmetry and training. Uh, I, have, I have one thing to work on instead of needing to train well, what if I need to go underarm? What if I need to go sh uh, short stock? What, there's, there's less to it. Learn the one technique of cheeking that gun, yep. and then it's all of it. Okay. So to me, what I'm seeing here with this, and having actually tried this out now, is my, my, my rear hand here is locked up so the joint's all compressed together, and then that strap is locking the gun into my hand, so the gun can't go back past my hand and my hand can't go back because this joint is tightened up in and so there's kind of nowhere for the gun to go right and it's then a matter of making sure that i'm not punching myself Correct. with a thumb over the grip or with fingers coming wrapped up around under the grip it's a really interesting technique so uh, i have one day and two day blocks going into all of this uh, so you come out you do a one day class with me, you're gonna leave learning, uh, you've, you're gonna leave knowing how to run this gun comfortably and knowing that you're not going to get your teeth kicked out, your nose broken, all of the meme stuff that we associate happening with these. Uh, you go out and you do a two day and you're gonna learn more on how to do those, those transitions. If it's a pump, you're gonna be learning how to run that pump more effectively with this push clinch technique. 
and we're gonna we're gonna plug it into the environment so we're gonna focus on small spaces uh, and um, and learn all the weird stuff that you have to do inside of a doorway in a narrow hallway uh, working from a vehicle inside the vehicle shooting over a vehicle and some of the advantages that this gun has when you have the gun married to the eye and no longer forced to hunch down with that being on your chest. Okay. Um, and you also do sell recoil straps. I do. You're working on that design. So this, uh, this has gone through three revisions now. The concept is the same. Yes, I, I am partial to this. I designed it and I sell this. So you can get this on the website. Uh, do you need this on a gun to run it? No, but if you're if you're gonna come out and train with me, I do suggest having the tool that I like for this on your gun. It seems to be a really good element in learning how to do this. this Maybe is, you don't need it once once you're really good at it, but it's gonna make it a heck of a lot easier to, to understand and to develop the, the physical muscle, not muscle memory, but understanding the body mechanics to go into it, because this is a weird technique. It's compared to any other form of shooting. It is, it is different, and what I'll say is all of the technique that I teach here, it is not just some unicorn thing that I do for this gun. I shoot all long guns like this. I shoot my handguns using the same general pressures applied okay. as I do this. So we talk about symmetry and training. You can have a bunch of different techniques and you are dividing the amount of time that you can put into each one of those techniques every time you get a new technique. Or you can have one body of general pressures that you apply to all guns. And I, I see people benefit, I, I see a lot of people benefit in their pistol game after they learn to run one of these. Interesting. Okay. All right, well, thank you very much for coming out. Thank you for teaching me the basics of how to do this. Very well. Um, Thanks for having me on. I, I've been I, chomping at the bit for it. That's. Uh, I'm impressed that someone can make me rethink the uh, the trash cannon. <laughs> it's there's a there is a there there. So, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I'll have a link to Rhett's website down in the description text below. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this one. This was an inter a very interesting day out at the range. Um, very educational day, and uh, it was fun. Thanks for watching. It's not a trash can unless it's from Valtrumpia. <laughs> it's sparkling dumpster, dumpster, dumpster defender. defender.